Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, I want to answer a YouTube viewer question about cab workbench and making configuration changes to the view in the cab workbench. It came from this video that's on my channel I made about a year ago, Cab Meetings in Service Now with Cab Workbench. You can see me there without my hat on, comparing the cab manager view to a cab attendee view. If we scroll down here, I've got a comment from Roshana Ramachandran about any insight into how we can show the impacted services against each change in the cab workbench. Any pointers will be helpful. Well, I actually didn't know the answer to this question. I've never tried to change anything in the cab workbench. So I thought, well, why not just show you how I went about figuring this out? And I think I got a couple of answers for you. So let's hop into the cab workbench. We'll open this cab meeting. I've got a change here at the top for adding or default support group on all Oracle CIs to the database group. Change number 70, right? And you can see I've got the service here showing, but not the impacted services or configuration items. I also know while I was in here that these tabs at the top, change, planning, and schedule, are kind of similar to how a change request looks like when you're not in the cab workbench. So let's go look at that. Here's that same change, not in the cab workbench, and I have a little bit looks like similar, but my tabs aren't the same. I have more tabs over here, notes, closure information, conflicts, in addition to planning and schedule on the cab workbench. So I thought, well, maybe there's another view just for a cab workbench. And sure enough, if you look right there, I've got a cab workbench view you on a change request. So I switched to that cab workbench view and when I did that I saw my service and I saw the two tabs that I was expecting. So you can see service there and you can see planning and scheduling tabs there. So I was like okay these things are connected and this is what's showing up on that cab workbench. What's not showing up on the cab workbench is the impacted services slash CIs. Let's take a look at that and move my head out of the way. If I scroll down on that form there's no related list on there. So I think that might be the question that she's asking about is how to get that on there. Um, I hope it's not just that because I already have service on there. So let me show you. I started playing around. If you go in and just change or configure this view, I'm just going to go to form layout and I wanted to see if the two things were connected. So I wanted to make a really small change that didn't impact anything and of course don't do this in production. All right, I'm finally in the right application scope. I've got my cab workbench view, which you can see right here. And notice I've got the change request section, planning and schedule. So to test my theory here, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new section and we're gonna call it test. Actually, let's call it demo for YouTube because I like to do stuff for the YouTube. And in order to test to see if this works, I'm just gonna put any old field active as a good one. And I'll be able to see if adding this new section actually updates the cab workbench. I know it's gonna update my form here. There's my demo for YouTube, there's active. But let's go take a look at the cab workbench. So I've got change planning and schedule. We'll go ahead and click refresh and see if that new field or new tab appears and the active field. So sure enough, there's that demo for YouTube tab. I'll click on that and we should have active. Okay, so test successful. Now I know how to change this particular view of a change request in the cab workbench without doing anything with the cab workbench. I just got to change and update the view. So once I figured that out, I went back to the layout and I was like, well, how do I get my impacted services and CIs? I've known in the past that you can have embedded lists in forms. So why shouldn't I be able to put an embedded list in that form? So I went in here, I switched to my section, demo for YouTube, and let's go ahead and look for impacted services. There's a lot of stuff I can actually add, but you can see impacted CIs is one of the things I can add. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. Actually, let's leave the active there just to make sure um, it's still there after I make my changes. I'd like to do that when I'm testing and just change one thing at a time. So I've got my new section here, demo for YouTube, but notice I don't have any impacted CI. So I wanted to switch back to that default view where I know that was showing as a related list on the bottom and go ahead and get some impacted CIs on there so I could see if that was actually coming through. So there's my impacted services, CIs. I'm going to click the add button behind my head. Let's go ahead and search for Oracle since it's an Oracle change request. And we'll just select three of these and add them to our change request. There they are on the bottom now associated with this change request, I'm going to hit save just for good measure, and then I'm going to flip back to my CAD workbench view and see if those showed up on my form. So we'll change the view here, uh, change it more carefully back to CAD workbench, and now I've got my tab in the middle with the impacted CI. So does that answer the question on how I get the impacted services? Let's see. I don't have it here yet, so I need to hit the refresh button. We'll do that here. 
click on refresh, and hopefully I have my impacted services. Click on there, demo for YouTube, it didn't show up. And I was like, oh, that's a bummer. So I can add certain fields, but that embedded list is not something I can add to the cab workbench. So the cab workbench doesn't know how to render that particular field type. So then I started poking around in here, and this is where I had the aha moment. If you are ITO and you have this edit button user, our edit button uh, icon, you can open the cab, you can open the change request in the legacy UI, and guess what? You can see the related list at the bottom. So let's just switch our view back to the default view. I always have to do it twice for some reason because I can't move my mouse properly. But we'll go back to the default view, and now I can see the impacted services CIs from the cab workbench. I wish I had started there, but I taught myself a couple of things along the way. One is that I now know I can edit this particular form, and if I'm the cab manager or someone with ITIL that has permissions and can edit or pencil a change request from the cab workbench, we can go ahead and see those impacted services CIs. So it doesn't quite answer the question, but I gave you some tips, and hopefully that gets you on your way to getting your services on that form. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope everyone found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in editing their view of a change request in the cab workbench. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.